Alright, so looking at the second page of your notes here, we're going to look at modeling equations. Okay, so one of the things for grade 8 math, you are supposed to be able to understand not only how to solve equations, but how you can model them with you know, concrete materials or draw pictures of them to show them. So some of these here we're going to be able to draw pictures, some of them we would be able to use um, algebra tiles or some physical object. So let's take a look. Algebra tiles, generally speaking, um, they're going to be uh, at least in grade 8, we'll add a couple more in grade 9, but we've got a longer rectangle, Ooh, that is supposed to be a rectangle, and if it's shaded in, just pretend I meant to do that, um, if it's shaded in, it's going to represent a positive variable, so call it x if you'd like, um, if it's not shaded, generally with algebra tiles, you'll flip them over, so it's uh, uncolored, and that's going to be a negative 1. And then if you're looking at single um, constants, so positive 1 is going to be a little square. And it's going to be shaded in. Oops. Try again here. Positive 1 is going to be a square shaded in. Negative 1 will be a uncolored square, so again, flipped over. All right. So, let's solve this guy here by modeling. So, the way that this would work is you'd say, okay, on one side we've got 3x. So, we're going to do three of our rectangles. And they're shaded in because they're positive. And here we go. So those are three shaded in um, variables, in this case three x's, and we're going to say that's equal to negative 12. So what we need to do really is divide our variables into three rows. Right? Now I can tell you, and you can probably do this kind of just by inspection, you're going to know that there should be um, four of these negatives in each row. Um, Right, because divide both sides by 3, we've got negative 4, right? x is equal to negative 4. But to model this, we would look at it like this. And then basically what we can do is we can say, well, if 3x's equal all of these negative 12, one of the x's, we can circle one of the rows. You probably can circle it a lot more neatly than I can. Um, and away you go, which means that x ooh, equals negative 4, right? All right, so let's take a look here. Um, example number 2. Um, and then, my apologies, we can also check this. So once we've got our x equals negative 4 for the first one, to check it, we put those that number back into the equation. We're going to say, okay, if x was indeed negative 4, well, 3 times negative 4 equals negative 12. And we can see that negative 3 times negative 4 is indeed negative 12, which means that the left side is equal to the right side. Um, it is actually equal, so it checks, and we know we've solved it correctly. Moving on to the next one, okay, so negative 3t, so here we've got three of our negative variables. Pretend those are each rectangles, um, and that's got to be equal to negative 6, so again, we've got to fit these negative 6 into three rows. One, two... 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, now we're almost done here, but not quite. Um, because we can say, okay, well, we can quite easily see that negative t equals negative 2. And 
algebra tiles wise we can just fl if we flip them over on one side we have to flip them over on the other side which would mean that positive t equals positive 2 okay and so t equals 2 all right again to check this we take our t equals 2 pop it back into here so we've got negative 3 multiplied by 2 is equal to negative 6 and we should know that yes negative 3 times 2 negative times a positive is equal to a negative negative 6 equals negative 6 and away we go it checks All right. um, example 3 all right, and four are very much the same, except here, these are harder to do with algebra tiles, okay? And so here for this one here, I'm gonna show, instead of my variable being completely um, shaded in, um, we're gonna divide it into three parts. So this is my variable. This The whole thing would be n, and if we've got n over three, it's like it's one-third of the n. So there we go. This is equal to negative 7. Oops, let's actually write that as 7 dots. All right, try again. This is equal to negative 7. 2, 3, 4, 5, six seven now guess what if we were to figure out okay that's one third of the n is equal to negative seven guess what a whole n we would have to fill in this row and this row and we would end up with seven more negatives in this row And seven more negatives in this row, which means that well, n over three is equal to negative seven. N. So if we got the whole thing filled in, how many do we got here? Well, we've got twenty-one. So n equals twenty-one, and they're negative, so negative twenty-one. All right. Let's check that. All right, coming back to here, plug in the negative 21. So negative 21 divided by three, it's supposed to be equal to negative seven. Negative 21 divided by three, well, 21 divided by three is seven. Sign rule says, yes, it is negative. Negative seven equals negative seven. It checks out, yay. All right, moving on. Uh, we could do this. I think your textbook does this um, showing that this is equal to a um, negative r. Oops, equals negative r. And then it does this and says, okay, well, here is um, is equal to negative r divided by 2. We've got our negative r and we've divided it in half. And it's going to look very similar to what we've got up top here. Um, so, right, half of it is equal to negative 7, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right. Now, remember what I said with the last page? If we're dealing with algebra tiles, we could flip them over, right? So this is negative r over, sorry, this is r over negative 2, um, which is exactly the same as negative of r over 2, all right? Um, one of the things we can do is we can flip over both sides and get rid of all of our negatives. And so I'm going to rewrite this, moving I'm moving 
basically here we've got positive r over 2, I've just flipped it over essentially, is equal to positive 7. Negatives are so much easier to draw. Five, six, and seven. All right, so again, just to make sure that that's separated. So half of r is equal to positive seven. If we were to fill in the second half of our r, we need seven more. We're multiplying by two here, essentially. And I know I'm shading them in so neatly, but I'm trying to get her done in a hurry. Lovely. R is equal to 14. All right. If I want to solve or check this again, again, I plug my 14 into the original equation for R. So now I've got 14 divided by negative 2 should equal negative 7. Sign rule says 14 divided by 2 well, 14 divided by 2 is 7. Sign rule says if I've got a positive divided by a negative, it will be negative. Negative 7 is indeed equal to negative 7, which means it checks, and I'm done. All right, so your turn. Um, your assignment's there. Get at it, and ask if you have any questions. Thanks.